discussion? All in favor to say a motion, let me know saying aye. aye. All opposed, nay, and it is unanimous. All right, public comment. We do have a couple tonight. So I'm going to go ahead and read the board chairman's statement for public comment uh, section of the meeting. It says the public participation section of the school board meeting is designed to hear comments from the public, but is limited to 30 minutes so that normal business can be conducted. During this portion of the meeting, board members will listen to concerns and comments, but will not answer questions or debate issues. Each participant will be limited to five minutes and will refrain from making personal complaints about school personnel or board members. Let's see here. So we'll go through as I have been given them. All right, Mr. Mark Hill, we invite you to the podium tonight to speak, sir. Yes, sir. Mr. Melton? Okay. Judge Melton, yes, sir. Good to have you tonight. This is a great pleasure to be here tonight. Um, my name is John Melton, Judge Melton of the Chesterfield Magistrate Office. I would like to bring Mr. Hill and also a gentleman that he brought from Columbia. We're going to be talking about, and I'm just going to introduce them about it, what they call a funeral is cancer. It's going to be related to good, uh, gang violence, and they're going to go and big detail of it and showing them what we can do and what they can offer to the school district. Good afternoon, blessing to you all. Good evening. Um, the proposal that you have uh, for pro proposal for parents overseeing planted seeds, we are a nonprofit out of Columbia, South Carolina, where we go into the community to stop the violence, dealing with gang violence, gun violence, domestic violence, and we want to come in, take the outreach from the community and bring it to the schools to educate them about fentanyl, the different type of drugs, the trauma that our kids go into. And we want to bring a partnership with the parents as well as with the teacher to bring something new that they may identify with. One thing that we never think about as our children going through a lot of different trauma, the parents going through trauma within themselves. So we want to bring the, um, not the funeral council, it's called Facing Shadows. It's a skit to show our kids and the parents what our kids are going through as far as getting killed um, by gang members, um, kids getting killed in, the, in their houses um, while gang, gang members are shooting our gun violence, et cetera. We want to showcase it, show them um, exactly how it is, how it affects our community in a whole. Um, we must build, build this village together. It can't be one person or one police officer, which we already have met with the sheriff and the other um, political aspects that um, agree to help and come and we just asking that y'all get on board and let it, we come to help you guys and it, it doesn't cost you a thing to save a life. Um, right now I'm going to introduce Minister Rodney Gibson so he can go on and let you know about the skit. Good evening. Um, yes, like my partner Mark said, the skit is to show the reality what people don't see. The unfortunate, me and Mark have seen it. We have seen the violence, we have seen the blood, we have buried children in Columbia, Newberry, Fairfield County, and we came together to stop it. We came together to stop the fentanyl issues that we're having in, in our communities, and we're going all through South Carolina. God brought us here. We're here to make a difference, and we're gonna do that through trauma. Because a lot of times people don't understand what the reality is until they see it. And we do a good job of putting it directly in people's faces to change people's lives. So we are here tonight just to bring some help. And hopefully we can come into the schools and make a difference here in Chesterfield. That's basically it. Okay, thank you. Are you through, Mr. Melton, as well? Where we can do this, and hopefully if y'all on board with it, we would like to come to the, each high school, each middle school, even if we have to go to the intermediate schools, because this is becoming a problem in our area, more so throughout the nation. As we found out through stats that drugs, but now it's more gang violence that is hitting us more. A lot of our children are dying through gang violence. Myself, dealing with Pathfinders United, I have already been buried three of my youth that came to my center. 
And the day that I had a case in front of me, the day that a young man, and you will see in the paper, probably this week or even next week, about a shooting that happened in Chiro. I can't go into that because it's a minority. It's a, it's a minor, not a minority. But that's what I'm saying. We need to do something now. We don't need to wait. These gentlemen come out of Columbia, and they got a big program that's nationwide. I think this is something, when I was a youth in high school, they had something they called Scare Straight. I think this program is as, as close as that as we're going to get. And it's not going to cause us a penny to do this inside the district. I think that's the best thing that we don't have to put no funds up for. And these, these gentlemen are, they are volunteering their time and their resources. I think we need to get on board with it. Thank you. Thank you, sir. We appreciate it. Thank you for your information. Is that all the comments, Ms. Coon? Okay. All right, at this time we'll have our moment of silence uh, followed by our Pledge of Allegiance. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and introduce um, uh, this young lady, Emma uh, Andrews. Uh, it's gonna come up and lead us in our pledge after we have our moment of silence. So if everybody would please stand, I'd appreciate it. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right. Thank you so much for leading us in our Pledge of Allegiance tonight. We certainly appreciate it and welcome you to our meeting uh, as well. I'll take just a few moments and welcome our visitors. Thank you for being with us tonight. We see several of our administrators uh, out. We thank you to our SRO, uh, Tillman, uh, for being with us uh, as well. Thank you for being here tonight. Um, students, parents, and all the citizens. Uh, Link newspaper, I believe they're back there as well. Certainly want to recognize them, and thank you for attending our meeting uh, and giving us the coverage that, that we need. Uh, board members, you've been given uh, the minutes prior to the meeting. Uh, for December the 11th. Hear no objection to the minutes that you were provided. They'll be deemed approved by consent. Hear none, it's unanimous. Uh, please let it reflect. Do we have a quorum? We do have a quorum present for the meeting tonight. All right, at this time, I'm going to turn it over for special recognition. So we'll start out with Dr. Anderson, and then I think we'll move to Dr. Hale. All right, tonight we have the opportunity to recognize one of our own. Uh, this individual has completed 20 years of service as a school board member. All of us here in our school district, along with the school board association, would like to thank him for his leadership tonight and present him with his lapel pin uh, for his service, as well as a certificate of service for his 20 years as a board member here in Chesterfield County School District. Uh, as a board member since 2005, I do ask that all of you please join me in recognizing our uh, board chairman, Mr. Chad Vick, for 20 years of service. Mr. Vick. And I come up. Now he asked me. He asked me before. Did I want? He, he asked 2004. 2004. Okay. Instead of 2005, it's, been, it's 20 years. He asked, he asked me before uh, if I wanted him to come down with me as I read it. And I said, why would I do that? I get one opportunity to tell you what to do. So that's why I said it this way. <laughs> but congratulations, we appreciate you. Um, and as a board chair, I can tell you it's been a pleasure working with you. He, very supportive, um, has, just has a heart for Chesterfield County School District. Always wants to do the right thing. I appreciate you. We all appreciate you. Congratulations.
So, Mr. Chairman, Dr. Anderson, members of the board, Happy New Year. What a great way to begin 2024 with the recognition of, our, of academic excellence. The 23-24 academic bowl season was one of the best for all four high schools. This year's abbreviated schedule allowed the competition to start earlier, so we were able to end before the winter break. This year's banquet was held on December 7th with a Christmas theme with approximately 100 participants. This year, our students decorated bags for socks collected by the district office. Along with the bags, they wrote cards for the patients at the nursing homes in Pageland and Sherrall. This was a way to give to the elderly. I was here that evening and it was wonderful for, to see the kids doing that. Before recognizing our students in schools, I would also like to acknowledge Ms. Jane Pig for her support during the season and sponsoring the banquet. Of course, Ms. Jacqueline Huff is here with us representing the link. Okay, so um, each year, school coordinators select two members from their team that best exemplify the ideal academic bowl team member for Chesterfield County's all district team. So tonight's all district team members are, I need you to come forward as I call your name. And then if the coordinators and principals are here, I'd like for you guys to come forward as well. Okay, don't be shy. All right. So those uh, coordinators are Elizabeth Dixon, Vincent Pravat, Brian Myers, and Chris Lloyd. And of course, those principals, Neil Adams, Dr. Chauncey Malachi, Rob Ransom, Sherry Young. All right. So, okay, y'all come on. So our first, we're gonna recognize uh, all district team members from Chesterfield High, Ms. Serenity Jenkins. Finley Stevens. Sherrall High, we have Dakota Keith. And Jaslyn McClendon. From Central High School, Mr. Davis Tucker. And Mr. Daniel Williams. Last but not least, Macby High School, Ms. Kiara Hicks. And Ms. Emma Andrews. So our subject area school winners, Chesterfield High School, Language Arts and Math. Okay, Mr. Adams, would you like to come and grab those? Or Ms. Dixon? Both, yeah, okay, one or the other. I decided not to speak to <laughs> Sherrall High School, Science and Social Studies. And then Central High School, General Knowledge. All right, here we go, all right? So at the end of the season, when match points were tallied, the 23-24 Academic Bowl runner-up is Sherrall High School, Vincent Pravat coordinator. And the 23-24 Academic Bowl champion is Central High School, Brian Myers as the coordinator. Yes. So, do you have so the rest of the team members? Yes, yes. Would y'all please come up? Come on, yay!
Very good. So we want to say congratulations to our individuals, the content area winners and the overall school winners. All of you bring pride to yourselves, your parents and school and Chesterfield County School District. Thank you. On behalf of the school board, we certainly want to congratulate uh, each of the teams and thank you for your dedication and hard work that you put into uh, for it. And we're also going to take about a one-minute recess because uh, you guys might have some studying that you're wanting to do. So uh, we'll take a break. Uh, but congratulations. Oh, not right. Yeah, good to see Mark Tucker here tonight, former board member. We get to see him quite often with his son. I look like a church sitting in the back now. <laughs> All right, at this time we'll turn it over to Mr. Caskey for our November financial report. All right, Mr. Chairman, Dr. Anderson, and members of the board, good evening. Good evening. Uh, prior to this evening, you all received on the board docs uh, portal a copy of the November financial review. Is there any questions related to that? Any questions? Here, none. Thank you very right. much. Thank you, sir. All right, at this time we'll turn it over to Dr. Anderson for our personnel report. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Members of the board, at this time I would like to recommend for your approval exhibits A through F. So moved. Motion made by Coleman, properly seconded by Teal. Any discussion? All in favor of the said motion, let me know I'm saying aye. aye. All opposed, nay. And it is unanimous. Thank you. All right. Getting here from Dr. Hale again tonight. So Dr. Mm -hmm. Hale, we're gonna let her come up and talk about curriculum. <laughs> <laughs> drew the short stick. <laughs> yeah. No, it gives me pleasure to bring some highlights from the curriculum report for you guys and ladies. Um, the schools finished their classroom spelling bees in November and moved to the school spelling bees in December. So th this event is for grades five through eight so the winners of those 11 participating schools will meet on January 23rd right here at PLC for the district spelling bee. So I'm sure you're all invited, right? Um, MACB Elementary and MACB High Schools collaborated to bring their multi-language families together for an ML Parent University Night. This was held on Thursday, November 2nd from 5 to 7. Teachers, staff, and administrators from both schools took the time to make connections with these families by building those relationships, playing Loteria, and eating dinner together. Some of the committee members and their parent liaison, Ms. Leanna Bell Sanchez, speak Spanish and were able to translate questions families had for the school staff. Um, it was a very successful night. Might be held there next parent university on January 4th from 5 to 7. And then also Pageant Elementary held its first parent university meeting on November 30th from five to seven. Over 20 adults and 16 children were there. Uh, so they had a great night as well. 
Topics for discussion included Title I, Parent Portal, Class Dojo, Families Enjoyed Interactive Games, Hot Chocolate, and Conscious, Mexican Bread. Pageant will host their next one on February 15th. Okay, wanted to let you know that Kindergarten Connections, these are for the, this is the primary and elementary schools. Kindergarten Connections will begin on January 10th, not too long from now. The program will provide targeted small group instruction to kindergarten students that may benefit from additional support and literacy skills. School data teams carefully analyze this data to determine which students will receive services. All right, uh, music and fine arts. Uh, December 6th, fine arts teachers gathered right here at PLC to plan for their all county arts festival in March and take the opportunity to learn survey. This survey measures their visual and performing arts programs in the areas of curriculum and scheduling, staffing materials and equipment and facilities. Also, um, on December 7th, art and music teachers participated in a grant writing workshop with arts coordinator Hannah McGuire. The workshop focused on tips for grant writing that maximizes funding. So mark your calendars for the upcoming All County Fine Arts Festival on March 6th and 7th of 2024. All right, we're decided to bring this tradition back. And then last but not least, a little bit uh, from technology. Certified teachers will receive new Windows laptops during this semester that we're in right now. These new devices will assist in providing high quality and up-to-date technology, technological support. Students will receive a new Chromebook during the 24-25 school year. Those are already here, and so they will start getting those ready for the refresh, and that would uh, replace the current model to provide updated technology. Any questions? We'll hold questions, I'm sure. Please. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Dr. Hale, for that. All right, at this time we'll turn it over to our superintendent, Dr. Anderson, for a superintendent report. All right, thank you so much. Uh, let me begin by thanking all of our district stakeholders, especially our Chirac community for their presence at our two community meetings that we had on last month. Uh, I really appreciate the concerns that were shared and the willingness to support Chirac High School as we move forward with our school safety, not just at Chirac High School, but throughout our district. We have already uh, increased the operation and supervision of our metal detectors at Chirac High School and uh, throughout our high, uh, middle and high schools throughout our district. As a result of those meetings, um, we will be formulating a parents, administrators, and law enforcement safety team. For those who signed up uh, that were present on that night, um, we will be contacting them very soon and we'll be meeting in early February. Also, as a result or outcome of the meeting, uh, we actually will be uh, having all of our schools go through uh, additional ALICE training so they can become ALICE certified schools. This will actually begin this week at Sherrill High School um, and taking those necessary steps to accomplish and attain that ALICE school certification status. Um, that training is for, that's additional training, intensified training for all of our uh, staff members, um, again, at all of our schools. So again, to the Chirac community, Mr. Sweeney, you were there on one of those evenings. I appreciate you being there as well. But thank you to all of our stakeholders again and to the Chirac community. Upcoming events tomorrow, as you all heard today, um, will be a, an e-learning day. On this Thursday, January 11th, report cards will go home, but that will also be a late day for employees. Next Monday, January 15th, uh, no school, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Uh, holiday. On January 18th, that will be another late day for employees. And uh, also on January 25th, uh, we will have a superintendent's chat uh, at New Heights Middle School from 5 p.m. to 6 p.m. Uh, the first one that we did back in October went very well in the Chirac area, and we're, we're anticipating the same uh, turnout uh, and positive discussions uh, at this meeting as well, again on January 25th. And then on next month, February 6th, we will, uh, I'm sorry, interim reports will go home uh, again on February 6. Okay. As far as uh, school board recognition, I'm going to pause and yield back to you real quick. Yep. So we were going to actually take a few moments and uh, recognize one of our board members. Mm -hmm. uh, but I first of all, I want to say thank you to each board member. Uh, until you've sat in these seats, you have no idea. Uh, it, it appears uh, what we do here for an hour uh, once a month appears simple and easy, uh, but there's a lot of phone calls and there's a lot of passion uh, on this board, and we've definitely seen that displayed 
uh, over the last, well, 20 years I've seen it. Um, so I want to thank each one of you uh, for that. But we do have a special recognition uh, tonight. I don't know where they got this big bag at. But, <laughs> but uh, one of our board members has just completed uh, his doctorate. And so I wanted to recognize him tonight. Uh, I'm beginning that process next Friday. So um, I've already looked at how long that journey is. And so we want to recognize uh, Dr. Darren Coleman uh, with a new plate tonight. Uh, and he didn't know it. So. I certainly want to congratulate you uh, for the work that you put in for, for that. There you go. Wow. All right, so I'll yield it back. Okay. Well, I want to piggyback off of uh, what Mr. Vic just said. You know, every year our state designates the month of January as School Board Appreciation Month. And uh, though this is an annual event, being a school board member, you know, seeing it from my, from, from my perspective and where I sit uh, is indeed a day-to-day -day experience. It's not an event. It's an experience every day. Um, as our educational and political climate, you know, continues to change throughout society, your job becomes more complicated. And, and a lot more challenging, and I, and I totally get that. We get that. Um, it's a call to service and the responsibility to our community, our parents, our schools, uh, public educators, and most importantly to our students. So on behalf of our uh, schools, our administrators sitting out there, those present and those who couldn't make it tonight, uh, and each community that make up our uh, school district in our county, and myself, yours truly, thank you so much, and happy School Board Appreciation Month. Congratulations again. Let's give them a hand, y'all. Thank you all. All right, Mr. Chairman, um, last but not least, uh, Board Policy JHCB would like to uh, bring to your attention again for a second reading. That policy is uh, regarding release time for religious instruction. Okay, so this is the second reading. Yes, so sir. this time we'll entertain a motion. Properly made by DUSA. Properly seconded by Teal, and we'll have questions. Yes, sir. What is this program presently in place? Now, do we have a religious program set up? I know it's going to show up in the city, do Yes, sir. And what about in other parts of the county? Yes, throughout our county. Any other questions? Any other regard out of the county to the system in the program? Not to my knowledge. Okay. Yeah, it's it's done at the school at their schools. Right. Yeah. Okay. Any other questions? All right. Hearing none. All in favor of the said motion, let me know. Say aye. Aye. All opposed, nay. And it is unanimous. That's okay. it. Thank you, All sir. Right. Okay, um, board members, you've also been placed in your packet. We do it every year uh, as a member of the um, school board. Uh, we have a pledge uh, as far as ethical principles uh, from the SCSBA. It is in your packet, and before we leave tonight, we will take a picture because the, the frame did come in. I think it's where that picture probably came from, right? Is that the one you had up? Yeah, it was from last year's picture, but it's time to take that picture again. So uh, we'll take it um, again before you leave tonight. Uh, we'll remind you that uh, the SESBA annual conference is February the 15th through the 18th at Hilton Head. The deadline uh, for that is January the 19th. If you're going to uh, plan on attending, please let Ms. Coon know. Uh, and I will let you know that Dr. Anderson is speaking uh, at, the, um, at the conference. Uh, so we plan on trying to go and support him as well. So, Also, February 12th is our board meeting at the Palmer Learning Center. Uh, executive session starting at 5 and then the meeting at 5.30. All right, being that there's no other uh, business for tonight, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Second. Motion made by Dusa, properly seconded by Coleman, Dr. Coleman. Uh, any discussion? All in favor to say a motion, let me know I'm saying aye. aye. All opposed, nay. And we adjourn. <laughs> <laughs>